Greetings. In this video, I will show you how to create devices to grow microgreens. I will conduct experiments exploring optimal methods for growing these nutrient-rich wonders. Along the way, I'll dispel common myths associated with microgreens. To assemble your device, you will need the following components. Plastic container. You can find it on AliExpress at the link provided in the video description. It is made of PP5 food grade plastic and costs only $7. Two types of LED strips, white and phyto, specially designed for plant growth. I recommend buying one meter of each strip along with a USB cable so you don't have to buy the cable separately. Mesh for growing seeds. You can use fine nylon mesh, although it is quite problematic to buy less than half a meter. 3D printer with plastic filament and your time. All printable files will be in the video description. First. I designed all the parts to 3D print in Fusion 360 and verified them with modeling. Then I saved them in STL format and sent them off to print. The whole printing job took 6 hours and 75 grams of plastic was used. Now let's skip the tedious details of seeing the printer in action and go directly to the results. Here are all the components you need to assemble, solder and glue together. The good news is that they were all successfully printed. The bad news, however, is that not all of the parts turned out exactly as intended. Some excess material needs to be removed with a file. Now everything is assembled perfectly and we can see how the mesh will fit inside the container. Now it's time to create the lamp. To do this, I take the USB cable that I cut from the LED strip and remove the insulation from it. I do the same with the wires. Next we install the LED strip in the mount. There is a blue insulation on the strip that needs to be peeled off to expose the adhesive part. Then we insert it into the groove. It is very important to connect the wires correctly. The plus positive wire is red and it needs to be soldered to another red wire. The same goes for the minus wires, black and white. I lengthened the wires a bit by adding another 10 centimeters of cable, but this step is optional. Now it's time to solder these wires to the USB cable. You need to put on heat shrink tubing before soldering. The plus wire, red, connects to the plus wire of the USB cable, and the minus wire, black, connects to the minus wire of the USB cable. Heat the tube evenly with a lighter to secure the solder joints. I pull the cable almost all the way through and assemble the two parts of the lamp. I created the hole the same size as the 3D printer plastic, so there is no need to print a separate part. The diameter is 1.75 mm and I fit it snugly into the hole. I repeat the same process on the other side. The only thing left to do is to attach the lamp mount to the container so the lamp is removable. I use rubber glue and let it dry for 24 hours. Everything is ready and you can move on to testing the unit. First, I install the grid and pour in the water, 380 milliliters. You can also tell the water level by how it reaches the mesh. Next, I pour in the seeds. Depending on the type of seeds, it will be three to five grams and I spread them evenly over the surface. On the second day, the seeds swell and open slightly. On the third day, the changes become more noticeable. 
on the fourth day the seeds themselves will lift the lid and the root system will begin to form. It's time to set up the lamp and turn on the light. Why exactly on the fourth day? I will explain at the end of the video. Day 5. The leaves will become greener, more active growth will begin. Day 6. Finally, on the seventh day, you can harvest. I ended up harvesting 30 grams of radishes, which may seem like a small amount. However, considering that microgreens contain 8 to 40 times more vitamins, minerals, and antioxidants than mature plants, this is equivalent to 240 to 1200 grams of adult greens. After harvesting, I clean the mesh. It's pretty simple. The unit is now ready to grow a new crop. If you need such a device and don't want to make one yourself, I can sell you one. I have 12 of these devices, each priced at $29. Email for contact will be in the video description. So, why do I turn on the lights on the fourth day? I did some experiments. For one batch, I exposed the microgreens to light on the second day after soaking the seeds. As you can see, the sprouts grew very low. The second batch received light starting on day 4. I found this approach to be optimal. The third batch was left in complete darkness with no light. The seedlings grew tall, but without photosynthesis they did not mature. The root system in all three cases appeared to be fully formed. Where did the idea of growing microgreens come from? They were discovered by NASA scientists back in the 1980s. In space, transportation of fresh food is prohibitively expensive and astronauts crave variety in their diet. So the idea of growing something locally was born. The magic of microgreens is that they contain 40 times more vitamins and minerals than mature plants. And they reach this stage in just seven days. Why should you use hydroponic water growing rather than soil or other substrates to grow microgreens. When using soil you need to make sure it is clean and free of contaminants. Finding truly clean soil is almost impossible these days. When microgreens grow in soil they absorb everything in the soil and you end up consuming that too. Hydroponics on the other hand involves growing in water which is easier to keep clean. I'd like to talk about the flavor. Microgreens are simply delicious. Let's take radish microgreens as an example. They taste like fresh radishes, but with a more intense flavor. Finally, there are some types of microgreens that should not be sprouted. Pumpkin, tomatoes, potatoes, and beans. The leaves of these plants contain toxins. Thanks to everyone who watched the video to the end.